Alright guys, welcome to an actual game review. I know that the last, I don't know how many weeks, uh, probably three weeks now, I've been maybe even four, been pretty much uploading only sandbagger games to some of your delights and to several of your uh, non-delights. I don't know, I think you guys just ignore it if you don't want to see it. Uh, but in the comments I have had a number of requests for, you know, hey, let's do not something not sandbagger, let's actually see, you know, some real games. In general, I don't do, I don't play very well if I'm trying to narrate my games, like, like while playing live. Uh, so instead, I just played a game and I'm just going to review it with you all right now. So this is a five Don game on the Taijum server. Uh, I keep getting real close to cracking the six Don level on Taijum, then just like losing that final game, and then you know how it is. You know when you're just ready to rank up and you don't quite have it. So uh, yeah, we gotta play. We gotta play some more five don games. We gotta review a lot more five don games, and hopefully we'll we'll make it to six don. So um, also, I'm really large on the screen today. I hope that's not too distracting. Uh, yeah. Anyway, in this game, I am black, and this game has a theme. It's uh, don't be depressed. Yeah, that's a really good theme. Don't be depressed, and go. A lot of bad things can happen that aren't necessarily like that are real bad but aren't necessarily game over like game go is such a fluid game uh you just got to find some reason to be happy and so especially in the times we're living in it's pretty easy to get depressed on the go board it's no different and i think that comes across in the game today anyway my uh so i, I i've been doing this thing this this opening on on the uh whenever i have black that is on a 19 by 19 board is this trying to intentionally make one of the sides of the boards extra large right so if there's any side any side that my opponent plays 3 4 i'm going to play an opposing 3 4 uh just quite aggressively um kind of cross game this and basically just declare this bottom side is going to be the most important side of the board and that's really important that's really going to shape how this game is going to be played white well, takes the fourth corner and I low approach, and white does this high pincer. Now, old classic Joseki. Oh, am I not able to click here? What is going on? Oh, I have to click this. There we go. Huh. Uh, it's something like this, and you know you can play here Tanuki. There's there's all sorts of things you can do, but this is like the super old school Japanese peaceful variation. The robots aren't too keen on this. Uh, instead, all the robots want to lean, and so that's what I do in the game. Uh, this is just, you just see this so ubiquitous, like the robot's just like, this is the move. <laughs> just just shoulder hit, 3-4 stone. Uh, so often. Um, normally, I'd kind of expect something like this. And, you know, you'd have this white floating stone, and basically everyone would just sort of make a mess at the bottom. Uh, we're going to make a mess at the bottom in a much even more violent way. Uh, where white is going to cut through. Whoa, whoops, have to remember which arrow key is which. Uh, here, I did look this up. Um, both of these are kind of playable um, to ways to protect this stone. The robots prefer this way. And this way, uh, you know, it's not, it's not simple. It's just not simple. <laughs> uh, basically just starts into a fight immediately, but the other way does that too, so I'm not sure. Um, the robots just tend to like this fight a little bit better for black. Um, probably just because there's um, a little bit more pressure on the corner just because these three stones of black are a little bit stronger, although they come at the expense of this. So you can decide for yourself, um, you know, based on the situation or even your preference. Um, but I played this way, which actually gives this side a little bit more strength, but does weaken the bottom. All right, so white's going to continue this way. The most violent of all the ways to continue... <laughs> Uh, the side that I declared I want to be strong, white says, no, I'm going to take away more liberties. Uh, I play here, which is great. Again, it's a help help to shape, give shape to these two stones as well as attack the corner. Black comes down, and I get out. And so right now, everything is kind of stable. Like, this is fine. <laughs> uh, it's vi It can be very violent, it can turn on a dime, but right now, everything is kind of okay. Um, and by kind of okay, I mean white really needs to Everyone needs to just manage, right? Everyone is just in super hyper management mode. Or white's going to try to make shape in the corner. Uh, it's not die there. Uh, this move is fine. 
um, white in this case chooses this way. Um, I say this move is only fine because actually I think the robot prefers pushing here and making white commit to one of these two shapes first. Um, something like this and then playing a move here. Um, but <clears throat> I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to play these cuts just because white has a ladder. And so I think these go uh, just a little bit more in white's favor because white has this corner. So, I, so I'm, I'm being a little bit more respectful <laughs> and uh, playing a move like this. And this is still fine. Like, we're still fine. <laughs> um, Black is just saying, hey, I'm just going to live small here. Um, I'm going to give you a floating group. You can sort of have the corner, but eventually you're going to owe me something here. This is a carpenter square problem. So there's still a lot of Aji in this corner right here at this point. So, like, it's when I say fine, I don't mean fine. What I really mean is it's everybody's just hanging on by a thread, but everyone's hanging. <laughs> All right, white pushes here. Uh, I extend, and then black plays here. So at this point, it's starting to feel like white lost the opportunity to, to cut through here with with this Hane or this uh, sort of shape point. Um, again, white kind of need, or black kind of needed to do this way back here um, to fight this way. And so I kind of missed a small opportunity here. Um, this variation is okay. Like it's not, this is not game over like black. It's still doing fine, um, if not even well, possibly well. Uh, so we just kind of crawl and ask, and then now white plays this move. I was expecting white to play here, uh, and then do something like this. And black is totally fine and, you know, game on. <laughs> but white did the, you know, mean one. <laughs> Okay, we're going, okay, so this, this thread that everybody's hanging on by, still, still just totally a thread. Like, we're just barely making it. Again, there's still this corner point. This black group is kind of surrounded. There's multiple cutting points here now. Uh, I cut immediately, which I think is correct. <laughs> and white extends. Now, at this point, uh, I think black has a choice. Uh, the robots say, okay, now is actually a fine time to come back and play a move like this. Try to get shape while putting pressure on these three stones. Don't worry about this over here. If black really wants that to ladder that stone right now, not a problem. You're just going to come up here like this and, you know, make white's life miserable here. And then maybe have some time to play corner Aji later. And meanwhile, you still get a ladder breaker here. So in the game, I didn't do that. <laughs> and so I, I fought here. And normally this is the normal move, like in any sort of fighting sequence along the edge. Uh, you want to make sure your opponent can't just capture your cutting stone. But this is where, you know, until you become a really strong Go player, you know, sometimes you have to think about exchanges uh, much more aggressively. And this is a fine exchange, right? Giving up the stone to be able to cut through here. It feels like such a loss, but again, there's so much Aji for white that it's okay. And so I just didn't put enough effort into considering this exchange. But we're still okay. Um, White's going to poke at this shape, try to thwart the liberties. I just connect up. This is a really nice move. It threatens to wedge here. Uh, but black has a really nice response. I mean, it's not even that really nice. It's just a response. Um, the, the, if, you, if you play here, this is the, you know, C plus B minus kind of move. I think my move is nicer. This descend is also very nice. Um, and, you know, obviously this wedge no longer works. Um, but furthermore, uh, I'm threatening to come in more aggressively now in the corner. So, finding a move like that. Of course, if white were to block here, uh, there would be, you know, I, I'm still, I, this wedge now works again. Um, for instance, let's say black plays there. Wedge, this is self Atari. And you're like, oh, black can just play there. Well, not really. <laughs> After, if I uh, take this way, this is a snapback. And if I take here, then I'm just super dead. <laughs> so those liberties go to nothing. So anyway, after this, white chooses this way, which is fine. And again, this 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 game actually, I'm I'm partially showing it just because it had a lot of strong play from both sides. Like, like there's a lot of these little like hanging on by a thread situations, and so uh, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, all right, so then white fills another liberty, and this is a, this is actually a fair way to per, like. There's a couple ways white can defend here. Maybe a move like this might is maybe even stronger. Um, but if white doesn't do anything, let's say white helps out this group, um, you guys can immediately see that white kind of has a problem. Um, this cut is 
uh, real, real hard on white to deal with. Um, like, I don't even know what the best sequence is here. Uh, like, I think white di just died, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, I, I don't actually know if white can save both sides. Maybe this move, but this seems like more dangerous than it's worth. No. Uh, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Here? Maybe that's fine. I don't know. <laughs> da, da, da. La no, that ladder. That, this ladder. I don't know. <laughs> That's real violent and scary. Like, white is out, but black captures over here, gets strong over here, and still has this attack over here. I don't know. I have no idea how the robot would evaluate that type of result. Anyway, this is just the kind of thing where I'm talking about. White plays here. This is super solid. It's, it's also taking away a liberty on this black group. Like, if white were to play here, this liberty could really matter in the fight over here in the corner. So, um, pretty, pretty reasonable. It looks dumb, right? It's got, it just looks dumb. But again, white doesn't want to give black any liberties. There's just no freedom. No, like, it's, we're still with that hanging on by a thread mentality. Uh, I play the natural follow-up, which is to shoulder hit these two stones, make them crawl and squirm. Let's crawl and squirm they do. And then here, I play here. Uh, I think the robot prefers this one. But maybe, I, don't, I don't remember how much it is by. Um, anyway, white plays this clamp. Uh, of course, when I play this in game, the one I'm most worried about is this. Like, and I'm worried about this read. And it looks like uh, black is totally fine, but is also going to suffer over here. Like, like black will capture the whole bottom, but white will get this corner and maybe even this corner too. Um, it might be able to start just the capturing race here and you know help solidify that while then taking this over. Uh, you know, it's it's a whole different game. So, okay, we got this, we got this. Um, but instead, white played this way to clamp. And this is the way white plays to get just more liberties, right? At, like, no, no thought to the cost of those liberties. White just says, I just want more liberties. In other words, I'm going to kill this. And... You know, this is this is a pretty big turning point in the game. It, it turns out, even though even though Black actually still has some ways to save this later on, that are really complex. Uh, it's it, you just I just I he committed right. He he made this super long kind of windy sequence to commit this, commit to killing these stones. All right, so I connect, and he gets out, gets more liberties. Um, I make these exchanges here. Uh, I'm not sure if they're really that... They're, they're certainly not necessary, but if this is going to live, like, I want to make those exchanges, right? Um, furthermore, that gives me another avenue to make this live, right, by making a Seki in the corner. So, that's pretty nice. Um, now that I've shorted the white group over here of eye space and liberties, uh, white gets out over here and does the same thing, right? So white clamped over here to get more liberties, white has clamped over here to get more liberties. If you're a Go player, you should not feel like this is good for White. Like, these are desperate situations, right? White is saying, no, I'm still killing this group. <laughs> like, this is the only thing I care about on this board. I'm going to kill this. And I'm kind of sad about this, right? During the game, like, I'm, I'm starting to hit the depressed level. I'm, I'm, I kind of see, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out a way to get enough liberties to kill one of the sides, and I'm, I'm not really finding it. Because at the very least, White has a, a co-type of shape over here. Um, and it's hard to actually, like... Like, to really, truly trap this white group. Um, like, if I just play this type of sequence, I, I can't play here, because, you know, if that happens... Whoops. Oh, go back to the... Uh, uh, if I play this way, this is just a disaster. Can't block there, right? Because then those die. So, so, you know, white can't make eyes if I don't let him, but he also... Yeah, like, all he has is liberties, right? He, he can get a bunch of liberties. Um, and I really can't prevent that. So, in the game, I make uh, an exchange over here just to make sure this group doesn't get attacked. He responds. Again, this is... Um, this gets really tough on white if black gets another move in here. Uh, you can imagine something like this being difficult for white to deal with. Um, just even as simple as that. Uh, black really only has 
six liberties, it looks like. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, but white needs at least one approach move. So six liberties, um, one, two, three, four. This group only here has four. So uh, this 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 turn is really big. This turn is really um, puts a surprising amount of pressure on white really quickly. And so white has to respond. Because again, everything white is saying is about this group. White just wants this group dead. Okay, I throw in here. This move's fine, um, but the next move I kind of I kind of chicken out. Um, like this, I can do this anytime. It's not really necessary right now, but we're going to play it, and then I'm going to play here. Uh, this I don't think is the best move, and the robots tend to agree. Um, this this like, like right now actually the robots like my position a lot. Like they're like black is doing great, <laughs> and now black they're like black is black is winning. <laughs> like it's still not. Um, it, like the game's not over, white certainly has a chance, but we, we took our foot off the gas, right? We're saying, okay, um, but this type of move, I just want to keep everything strong, like especially in combination with this over here and this over here, black's like, like I'm just going to focus on the next theater of war, wherever that's going to be. I'm not going to continue trying to put pressure or take away these liberties. I can kind of see where this is going, right? White has played these two sort of desperate clamps. Like white's shape is awful, <laughs> right? There is no shape here. This shape looks real suspicious, like it's not awful, um, but it just looks like white's played a lot of stones for very little definitive eye space, right? Um, so what is this worth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got 20 points invested in black stones, maybe another one, two, three, four. We'll, get, we'll round up to another 10 points in territory, even though that's really optimistic. Let's say, actually, actually, it probably does if you count any points in here. So. Realistically, white is, we're doing all these things for 30 points. And is this over here plus this over here worth 30 points? Robot says yes. The robot, again, likes black's position. It's not, it's not like game over. But black says, but what, you know, or white, white says, uh, or sorry, robot says to black, no, you, you still actually have enough. Um, the move that I probably should play is this one. And this one actually gives me more liberties. It gives white a lot of freedom, right? White can go and, you know, actually make a real eye or several eyes in the corner. Um, maybe even something just like this. Black has to be kind of careful over here, right? Where do you, where do you fix? This is a nightmare, right? Because of this sequence. So maybe you have to play there. Like, white can just come out and live in the corner. But now it's all about this corner. And this act, because white has to fill in here and here and possibly there uh, before taking away these liberties, this black group got super strong. And uh, I think I think if white were to play it out um, further, the best white can do is a giant co. So if you remember, white was only really playing for 30 points to begin with, and now it might have to turn into a co for those 30-ish points. White got a little bit more profit here, but um, so, but if we, if we, have, if we assume like a co, and again, I'm not, if, if this totally is so variable because you have co-threats and anyone can, you know, there's so many other factors go into a co-fight, um, just globally around the board. Um, but if, just as a shorthand, if we take, if we say, look, there was a 30 point territory for white, but if it becomes co, that's really 50, 50, we don't know who's going to get those 30 points. So it's only worth 15 points. And so white in this case, maybe gained 10 points, but lost 15 so who knows like that doesn't feel great for white um, in fact black might that might be enough just to give black an even bigger lead make him more sure of the win so anyway this 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 is my first like uh, like move that's above my level right like this is this is the first move that I play or I don't play that I really feel like hmm yeah, deciding deciding to play here is really tough for me to do at this level um, because again, letting white like even though even though like I'm not convinced like I can't convince myself I'm, I can I can make this group live cleanly like this doesn't give it two eyes I still have the problem over here it still might be Seki it still might be Ko but uh, letting this group live just feels so bad after the shape looks so suspect.
Um, and partially just because I feel like this is my corner, right? It's still that attachment to feeling like this is this is mine. <laughs> and I've got to be willing to make that exchange. And so white plays a great move here, right? As soon as I play this, white plays here. And this is uh, the move white needs to make sure that white can win this capturing race. Uh, I get to play some, some free stuff. Basically, I'm going to play over here. Um, strap this down, white takes away another liberty, I get to play over here. Um, this is a nice little Tesuji, if you can find it. Um, normal move is probably here, and this is still fine, like, probably goes something like this. Like, still fine for black, uh, but this is a little bit extra nice, because when black uh, connects here, now you can still see there's actually a bunch of defects in white. Like, how do you fix this position if you're white? Well, if you fix it this way, you're actually leaving um, some pretty serious Aji here. Uh, some, well, maybe not quite that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, you Again, Aji, probably need one more stone, right? Black can play anything over here and get this stone to, to do some work. Um, if white fixes it this way, there's this peep here, and then this Hane, and again, there's more Aji here, right? Black will get more free moves, and we, we're making sure white doesn't get more than one eye. Um, if you fix it just that way, that's the most solid way, but now, <clears throat> you know, black has a nice sort of peeping sequence. Um, it just feels like black gets a lot of momentum here. Um, and uh, in the game, white pulls back. It doesn't want to deal with any of those, those shape problems. But in this case, this potentially leaves this cut uh, later, or, um, you know, in, this, in the game, I just play this Hane right away. Like, I can just double Hane now. Right, or if I don't make this exchange, I double Hane now, like this doesn't work, <laughs> this period white just busts through. So like the real move I want to play is, is this move, but I can't do it without making some other exchange first. And so that's really the point. If I can make that exchange now, this Hane works. So that's just, it's just a nice little, I don't know, like mini Tesuji, like shapes, shape Suji. Really nice little subtle thing to get to push the direction you want. Uh, white plays here. This move I looked up for the, with the robots, and this is, seems like such a natural human move, right? Like, white white's eye doesn't have two clearly defined eyes. Here's, like, the really super strong eye shape point, and you can almost take it just perfectly for free, and I do. Um, the robots are just totally not impressed with this move. Like, I just don't care <laughs> that I make that exchange. Um, as a human, it feels great. Like, this is just so human, so natural to move, peep at your opponent's weak spaces. All right, white extends, and I just keep pushing. And so even though I'm sort of, I've sort of written off this whole not quite 30-ish point group now, um, there is some benefit, right? I'm getting this wall, and I still have, I got these two moves in the corner, so I still have something in the corner. I have a little wall here. Now, granted, this extension kind of mm, makes this wall a lot less valuable, but it's still there. It's still useful for something. I keep pushing. And then I come here. And at this point, right, now I have, whoa, look at this black neighborhood. It's giant. Of course, it's so thin. White can just play anywhere in, in there. Um, but wherever white plays, I can basically just take the other half of it, right? The robots don't really like this. They would prefer me just to make something a little bit more solid, pick a direction, and, you know, be pretty happy with just building that sort of thing directly. Um, I don't know. I thought I was thinking like a robot, just extending on the maximum scale possible, right? Just, we don't need territory. I will have the world. I'll just fight everywhere. Uh, but after this, you know, even if white backs off, you know, I can still come back and play this, right? Like any of these moves get real scary for white to deal with. So white jumps in. Uh, and that's a good move. All right, good timing. Uh, I play a very nice sequence here. This is, I'm... You know, just happy when the robot just is just like, yep, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Um, we we'll do what I do was kick, extend, white extends, and then come on top. This on this on top play both ruins white shape, as well as continues to help build this center area of the board, and fixes this cut. It's just a real natural move. Like normally, my instinct would be to play something like this, or even here or here, uh, and just try to put pressure on white's eye space, but. Um, because of this cut and because of the potential here in the center, this is slightly better. White comes out, take this opportunity to double approach over here, uh, which is 
pretty good. Uh, we play out a pretty, you know, at this point, standard Joseki. And at this point, White does not does not does not know what to do. Um, from here, normally the sequences are all very fighting kind of sequences. Um, where White will live small in the corner and have like a floating attacking group, something like that. Um, but White apparently doesn't know this. I found a hole in my opponent's knowledge, so we played here. So this move is not very good. It's real crude. Like it's like it's not bad. Like it's not it's not like you passed or anything. It still it still fixes this cut. It expands the corner a little bit, but it's so slow. And is it oh man, is it ugly shape? Uh, so I take this, uh, this peep, I don't know if I need it. In the end, it's actually a bad exchange. Maybe, actually, no, I kind of use that. No, actually, in the end, this works for me, but probably shouldn't have. <laughs> we'll come back to that later. Uh, but right here, this is just fine. Right, I mean, I don't, I should just probably play here. Um, just take more of the top, reach out to the two weak stones, and there's still a lot of pressure on these white four stones. So, I, mean, I, I don't know, I don't know if this exchange is really worth it at this point. Uh, White takes this cut, but then sort of backs off. And so I'm actually fine defending here. Um, this black, it looks like this is a kind of a fair fight, right, before this exchange. You have a white group that kind of has a base. It looks like you have a black group that doesn't really have a base. But again, I have forcing moves on. I can make eyes down here actually without too much trouble. Um, these four stones are a little bit weak, so if they truly get cut, they have to work to fight. Um, but white doesn't really press that matter. White just says, no, no, you can connect them up. So this black group here that's in, within the the strongest white part of the board, right? You see all these, this very strong-ish, maybe not really strong, but it just has enough liberties to kill this, so it's strong. This white group and this white group, I'm really strong. So right now, black, even though black doesn't have like guaranteed territory yet, Right, white still has invasion points over here, so this isn't really territory. There's definitely some fighting invasion over here, so this anything over here is not territory. This is very small territory. Uh, the corner can be reduced with moves like this. This is sticking out here, so black can't really count anything as territory over here. Uh, with all those th considerations, black doesn't really have any problems. So even though I'm still kind of depressed about losing this group, like I'm still like, uh, um, you know, like, like I've got, I've got nothing else to lose, right? There's no other, there's no other weakness um, that I really, truly have to, to worry about. I'm kind of strong enough everywhere. Even if white invades over here, these can just run out. If white comes across the top, I'll just build more. Um, maybe white can clamp over here and do some sort of t attack here. But again, everything is real manageable. Like there is no like obviously flailing group. And so. At this point in the game, like I've kind of hit rock bottom in terms of like uh, I don't know what um, how I'm going to win this game, right? I, I, I don't my my territory is not clear, but I have nothing to be pessimistic about, and that's kind of a nice feeling, right? And so at this point, my sadness from losing thirty points, you know, kind of changes. It morphs, and I think this happens a lot in Go when you have these groups that you know die. But in death, they give you life, right? They, they allow so many other things to happen, right? By allowing the Aji on the outside to get really strong. Um, they might not be clear how you're going to win the game yet, but you don't have anything else to feel bad about. Like, you've already lost something bad. And, you know, kind of to my surprise, the robot agreed with me. Like, the robot, I, I, I don't remember the win percentage at this point, but the robot was favoring black, basically, all throughout this all these moves. Um, it's not until much later where white kind of the, you know, at least the robot starts to think, oh, white, white is making a comeback here. Like, the robot looks at this and goes, yeah, black's winning. Yep. No questions. Uh, white plays here, does two things. Number one, puts more, you know, set, really sets up the invasion over here as well as strengthening the base of this group. Uh, and I just play here. I think this move might be a little bit soft. Like, the other problem with me not having anything to worry about, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Like, it's actually difficult to find direction if you're black. Uh, and so, you know, like, I don't need to reach out to weak groups. I mean, I mean, my logic, actually I do, right? Because I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, if white's strong here, that means this is my weakest area of the board, so I should do something to reinforce it. And if I play here, this threatens to seal white in. So, you know, this move can't be bad. The robot's favorite move here, though, is to just say, you see that move? White's just trying to make a base. That's great for white. Why don't you just take some cash? 
And if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with three extra, eight times three is 24, plus three more, about 27. Like this corner alone is almost to 30 points. So, you know, remember this, 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 this corner is actually worth the same as this dead group now, which is pretty amazing, right? And um, this is another hard part about Go, right? When do you make that transition from playing middle game moves like the invasion, reduction, uh, defense of, of like your, your weak groups. Um, when, when do you stop doing that? And when do you actually transition to territorial, you know, just points? And this, this is the point where the robot says, yes, this is like, like you have nothing to worry about. Just take points. You have a one game. Um, I'm still kind of having dreams here of, of trying to find the best line to play. All right. To my surprise here, white played here. Right, white, white, white knew apparently <laughs> that it was time to start taking points and plays here, and this has a really big follow-up as well. Um, the nice thing about this move for white is not only does it reduce my points, it also makes the white group much stronger. Uh, because if I don't do this, uh, actually, I can't even do that. Uh, do that one? Nope, that still doesn't work. Um, <laughs> like basically, white just reduces the corner for free. But if I don't, let's say I play here, and white plays here, now this white group is super strong and just flipped, you know, 20 points in this board, right? Where I was making 10 before, white is now making 10. Actually, it's probably more like where I was making 15 before, white's now making 5. But you get the idea. But regardless, I'm looking at this move as going, hmm, feels slow. Second line move, like I wasn't willing to play a second line move a move before, white was. So in my head, I'm pretty happy. I'm not sure if I should be happy. <laughs> because I missed the, the transition point, but I play here. And now I feel like, okay, because I got two moves over here, I'm, feel, I'm, I'm actually starting to come out of my depression because I feel like I have momentum. Um, I feel like we're still in the middle game. This is still, you know, we, we're, we're going to fight. We're going we're gonna to do this. I'm, I still have this memory of this battle down here that I kind of, quote unquote, lost. Um, fresh my mind. So I'm, I'm feeling a little bit mm, uppity. <laughs> like... Mm, yeah, we're gonna dance. Like, like I'm Batman, he's a joker, and I'm just, you know, <laughs> waiting for him to make a mistake and swoop in and throw him in Gotham jail and just watch him escape, you know, three months later. Is that how that works? I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, okay. <laughs> After this move, White kind of panics a little bit. Panic isn't really the right word, <laughs> but just has to come back and make some shape. Again, I play, I play a pretty patient move here. This move, actually, by pretty patient, I mean too patient. Um, this move, and I, I thought about this in the game, and I read it out, and I went, uh, this is, like, like I feel like I have so much momentum now. Like, I'm ready to start taking territory. Remember this move that I was ready to transition to territory from all this power and influence and fighting? Well, you know, ex let's exchange, you know, three more moves, and I'm like, okay, let's, I'm now kind of ready to, to actually transi transition to that, because I got these two moves in. Um... The robot says, no, this is where you actually, you know, keep your foot on the gas pedal uh, and force white into some sort of small shape. <clears throat> now, at this point, I, th I thought there's no way white's going to submit and just try to make eyes here. Um, for instance, if it goes something like this, um, right, there's just, uh, I think white would probably, leave, yeah, white doesn't have, to, like, this is just alive now, right, because white can live here or white can live here. Um, or, sorry, this is probably better. This move, or any of these moves. So white, white's totally alive. Um, but black gets a lot of strength on the outside. Like, it, it fixes all of black's problems. Um, I didn't think white would do that. I thought white would be do something more creative. Make this exchange. I don't know. Find some sort of cut in here. But it doesn't. nothing really works, actually. <laughs> and so I was playing a little bit... I, 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 like in three moves time frame, I, I, I switched from this mentality, like go back to here. Like I, I wasn't ready to just take territory here. And when my opponent kind of challenges me, um, I don't, I don't, I don't rise to the occasion here. I just, I just kind of get conservative and back off and say, no, this is just protects the cut. I have, I have, I have a nice follow up here at this F8 point. Um, if I get F8, remember this white group isn't, like, it still needs to come back and capture this at some point if it doesn't get two eyes. It actually probably needs to capture it anyway because of the right-hand corner mess. Um, but if I get a stone here, let's just put 
that on the board. Let's mark it. I have a letter. Uh, you know, it's it gets really hard to prevent black from getting, you know, 40 points over here. Like, white has to work really hard to break up even part of it. And meanwhile, with this stone over here, uh, it looks like, you know, something over here will be blacks. And a few points here, or here. Uh, white has this corner, maybe. <laughs> a little bit over here. Let's change our color. I don't remember how to do... There we go. Ooh. Blue and green. Okay. So white has a little bit here. Let's say 10-ish. And then we know white... Let's just get, again give 30 to white for this, and that might be a little bit generous. Um, but we get to this for another 8. Comey, we're looking at, I don't know, 50-ish something? 55? Black has 40 over here. It's not hard to imagine 15 points coming from here to here. So. Uh, instead, white plays this way. Um, instead of, you know, doing anything else, just makes life. Which gives white actually too many points here and leaves a defect. And that's that's the sad part. But again, I'm going back into territorial mode. I'm like, okay, I can see the number of points I need on this board to win. Let's just take po corner points. That's a really big move. Like, this is... There's still a little possibility there's some Aji here for me to exploit to either reduce this or even threaten its eye space. Uh, white plays here, um, which, you know, again, is defensive. And I go, that's great. I'm now taking the big point I really want. And right now, I'm feeling pretty good. I've come out of depression of losing this initial group, right? We powered through. That's what Go is all about. You know, it's who can keep that gravy train going just long enough to get it to be passed around the table. <laughs> And uh, there we are. All right, this move this is not a good move for white. This is, I, I, I mean, it's a, it's kind of actually a big endgame move, but white has a little bit of a liberty problem here. Um, so white can't really capitalize on this, right? Unless white's willing to fight a co. And I'll tell you right now, white is not willing to fight a co because of the Aji of this group. I have threats here. I have a lot of threats over here. Um, it's so hard for, for white to say, and, and for, actually furthermore, there's also th kind of co-threats over here. Um, and yeah, white has co-threats on black, but I'm not really super attached to anything, right? Like on this board. Um, like it's actually hard to find really good co-threats. Um, like be sure white can come in here and destroy territory or get an invasion, but at the end of the day, it just feels like black has enough influence that black is just safe. Like, you can't actually, like, kill anything big. So we play this way. Actually, I thought a long time in this move just to make sure that white had no co-threats in the game. If white has so many co-threats, like, huge co-threats, black might have to pull back here, which would be real, a real sad day. <laughs> but no, we got him. We got we got the threats. So white plays there. Um, really good Tesuji for all, especially Q players watching, if you don't know it. Um you have to play here. <laughs> this gains you an extra liberty. If you do not play here, now, um, I'll, you have to actually not play here twice. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say white goes and does something else. Now black plays here, and, you, and white still fails to play here. Well, that, or even here, let's actually, uh, I have a better sequence. Black plays here, you don't play here, you play here. Okay. Black plays here, white plays here. Um, now I can Atari... Actually, it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm one liberty short. <laughs> oh, no, no, hold on. Hold on, does it? Uh, it almost works. What I really want to do is I want to make an eye there. All right, maybe white plays away once. I play this move. And let's say white still can't find this move over here. So white's like, well, I got to take away the liberties. Yep. And take away liberties, and now black plays here. Oh, this doesn't work either. All right. Well, turns out white actually doesn't absolutely need it to um, to prevent death, but it actually prevents death without having to work for it at all, because this gains liberty. Right now, black can never turn here without having to play an extra stone first. All right. It's just making sure that black has to connect here, right wherever it is, before turning. And there are some sequences where black can turn without ever having to connect here, if that turn is an Atari or a snapback or something else. 
Like this is just, this is just, this is it's just a good move, right? Like the robots, of course. Like you just play here. It looks like you're throwing away a stone, but the extra liberty, like black, can never short this liberty. So worth it. Uh, white plays here to be extra safe, and I don't think actually white needs to do that. Um, but it does actually. It it's it does help on the right hand side in game two. But that just means black is playing a move here, and now I was looking at forty points here. I'm looking at forty plus. 10 to 15 more, right? Potential. If I if black can play another move, you can just see how this just turns into black as well. White plays here. I respond here. And in effect, this is a wash, right? Because white played here, <laughs> white doesn't actually need to respond again now. Um, but right, if, if we go back a few steps, let's say white did, I don't know, something like, or plays this, and now I play this, now white would need to play another move. So it's like we exchange, we exchange something very fair, oops, but very out of order. Like now, now that White's played this one, I think I should come back and play this one now. I think that's better. So we were both just we ended up with the the shape it should have ended up with, but just very illogically. All right, White attaches here. I just protect the more potentially weak side. Normal. White plays here, and I say, that's great, you can you can poke through there, that's fine. Actually, I should probably just play here. Hmm. That's pretty reasonable. I was, no, but I don't know, this is still really big too, right? There's nothing for white to do in here. White's gonna try real hard, um, so hard to find something. I mean, I'm very nice, like I'm, I'm, I'm just backing off here. And in the end, I collect all these stones. How much is this worth? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it's about 50 points now for this whole area. Uh, 50 points is pretty good. 50 points is all I need to win, essentially. Right? Just make 50 and a little bit somewhere else. Totally got it. All right, white plays here. And again, this is allowed because I didn't Hane here. Remember how I just backed off? Yeah. Yep. So I got to fix. White plays here. Um, at this point, I don't have to do anything violent. <laughs> like, I could just play here, and it'd be fine. Like, super easy game, right? Um, I don't... I don't know. I was just in a mood. It's like, no. This is... We're, we're not done playing this game. We have something fun left to do. I know it. So I say, no compromise. And Hana here, don't let him connect. And now, I have this little white turd in my nice tomato soup. I don't know what I'm eating. I'm actually getting hungry. Uh, I play here. Um, the robot actually likes this move better. It, lo it leaves more room for white to make eye space, but it's not really room um, for that eye space. Like, I can just slice in here and you know, black can connect out, or sorry, white can connect out, but it doesn't do anything. Like, like I just make these this side more solid, which it wasn't solid before. And so that'd be a very nice, easy sequence to just remember to take my 50 points and a little something else and win the game and go on about my day. But instead, we get to do this, <laughs> which is arguably more fun, but so much more dangerous. All right, so white's going to try to lean on this while getting out. And I still have some defects over here. Uh, I'm just saying, nope, nope, I'm just going super pig-headed. Uh, there was another game, I kind of meant, there's another game I played fairly recently that I meant to do a review of, um, and I never did, because it was, it was another game where it kind of goes like this in some ways, where I might take an early loss, but I'm actually up in the grand strategy of the game forever, basically. And basically all I have to do is just profit by attacking one weak white group that has is kind of too deeply inside, and and I fail, right? I, I have this huge misread, and I fail at it. Uh, this feels kind of the same way, right? This is this followed the same kind of logic. My loss in this game was much bigger at the start, um, but at the same time, my potential was actually larger as well, so feels like a wash. Um, here and here, this feels fine for white, and at this point, the robot's going, just yelling at me. It's like, look, you have enough points, you dumbass, just play here, go about your day. I'm not going to do that. No. I play here. <laughs> like, we're, 
I have I have a wall here. <laughs> I want to use it. I haven't been able to use this wall the entire game. I would like to use it for something. Like, even though I don't need to use it, it's there. This is so dangerous. This is this is just not ne not necessary. <laughs> uh, so I turn here, and White plays this cut, and again, the robot. Super calm, super chill robot, saying, look, you're a dumbass, you were a dumbass up until this point, but you know what? It's fine. You're allowed to be a dumbass now for so many moves in a row. Just play here, and go about your day. I don't do that. I play here. <laughs> White extends, and I extend, and oh man, we, we're going to keep this fight alive. Uh, White comes out, is trying to connect, and part, part of the reason why I'm doing this is because I played this peep here, I never got anything for it. And this peep is both um, really useful and also terrible, right, because it actually makes White, it gives White the ability to counterattack this black group at the top. Uh, I connect now, the robot's like, no, you did not want to connect there, that was a terrible idea. And after this move, White's like, real, like this game gets real hard to know who's going to win. Um, like, real, real hard. Uh, I forgot the exact robot sequence that the robot won, I think it's maybe just here. I don't remember. Uh, I think it's, I don't remember. Um, but the robot's actually now at this point, growing increasingly concerned if White gets another couple stones over here about <clears throat> me losing this entire top. Uh, in this case, White connects here first, so that means I get to come out first. And Slurbot still kind of actually likes the sequence for Black, like it's not... We're still, we're still fine, but we're, we're taking this one game and giving it a lot of question marks. Because here, um, this is kind of a, a do-or-die moment. Uh, the robot is still thinking, you know, that's fine, these two tones are dead, you have no problems here. Just play here, go about your day. I will not, good robot, sir. I will play here. And in doing so, I'm going to cut off this entire group from its friend, from its friend group. Um, White's going to find some Aji here. That's a pretty nice Aji. Throw in, short my liberties. And now you can see, actually, there are some defects uh, here in the group. I'm just, I'm just looking at potential st places for white to read out. <laughs> I think these are all good points. Actually, all of them <laughs> are really good points. Uh, white would like all of them, yes. <laughs> uh, actually, G is also a good point, too, because... <clears throat> um, here, I'll show you. Actually, it gets kind of played in the game if black responds here. Atari and Liv. It's pretty nice. See, like, all those are, like, legit possibilities that Black now has to be real wary of. White plays here looking for more liberties. This is the correct move. I was so happy when I checked it in the robot and confirmed this because I spent some time, like, not just playing the, the obvious, one of the obvious connections. Sometimes these are a little bit of a stretch, but now I come back and fix. White plays this tricky move. Can't play here. Have to play there. White can get a bunch of free liberties here and also put pressure on this and then poke out my eyes. So now we have two two eyeless groups side by side. Play the correct move. I have this to send to get more liberties. This is a real nice... It doesn't get me eyes. It gets me liberties though. So that's cool. Um, White has a way to get liberties. Here I play this move and the robot gets real pissed at me. <laughs> the robot's like, okay, from my calculations, I don't know what, what is going on. The game is now 50-50. I don't know who wins. Robot just want me to play here. Make sure white can't get any more liberties. And the robot can count this out and go, okay, black wins this by one liberty and we're good. <laughs> I didn't play here, of course, because number one, um, I want to get, you know, these moves. I want to be able to have the ability to take away these liberties. And if I do this, I can't quite do that anymore, right? For instance, I poke here. I cannot play here anymore, this is self Atari. And so in my mind, it didn't matter which one I played, I thought it was the same number of liberties, um, but it is not. <laughs> because after I play here, white can push again. 
And now I still have the same liberty problem, but why gain an extra liberty? So this is what's making the robot so incredibly pissed at me. Like, I give up. I am no longer able to teach you the correct sequence of what to do. You have failed at Go by not playing here. Uh, white throws in here, which is fine. And white plays here, again, fine. Um, I think the robot, the best move the robot came up with for white was actually play this one. And we get this kind of weird fun slash fun shape. <laughs> um, although white, white should um, push here again at some point. Uh, I don't remember the timing. <laughs> anyway, we just we just commence this capturing race now. Now white gets this push, but now I ignore it a play here. And so that's kind of a big difference, right? So you can imagine... Uh, is that a big difference? I don't actually... It might not actually matter. It's very subtle. Um, but this looks like it's going to go to Ko. Uh, it's not Ko. It's... It, it feels like, co like like it's it. There's no, um, like like if obviously if black wins the co the game like every all of black's pro stones are connected the game is just over this giant dragon is dead. Um, but let's assume white takes the co and black makes a threat somewhere or just takes away liberty. Um, white can't if if white connects this way. Uh, we can. We still have to play a lot of moves for white. Oh no, white, huh? It's totally another co. Oh no, sorry, sorry. That's that's th there's another co here. <laughs> um, white can't play this one first. White has to take co first. So let's get black another move. Then when black, um, when white approaches here, then black can take this co. White needs to find a threat. I don't know how you find a threat here with this giant dragon. Like, everything for white is so solid. And... If you don't find a threat, white can actually, or black can actually profit more by killing these stones. So maybe there. But now, it works for black. So... Clearly, I didn't need to stake the entire game on killing this. But I really wanted to. <laughs> That's how I play sometimes. Uh, and uh, I guess it's nice to be reminded by the robot that, you know, I don't need to do any of this. Sometimes I should just play here and go about my day. And that way, you know, I'm no longer... I, I got out of my depression, right? I got, I got my happy... I found my happy places. And... Uh, you know, I win by a couple. <laughs> um, I don't quite know the final score here. Let's see. Let's see if we have a... I thought there was a review, or um, a score estimate. Is there not a score? Like... Well, anyway. All right, I don't know how many. So, anyway. Important thing is, when you were depressed, uh, you just gotta, you know, really take accurate stock of, of the position of the game. Don't let it get you down if you have no other problems. And, you know, keep playing. And, and you might find that you actually have more resources than than you originally thought. And this game was totally that ca that way, right? Or even though I lost this group, uh, the advantage I was able to get on the other sides of the board was more than worth it. Um, and in Go, that's hard, it's hard to feel like that sometimes, you know. So, uh, I never really reviewed anything down here. There's actually some real interesting <laughs> sequences here. If if I take this liberty away, um, Black actually has uh, moves here and here uh, to start to actually make sure um, White doesn't have all the liberties White needs to have. Um, and there's some sequences where this can end in Seki. There's some sequences where this can end in Ko. Um, and no one wants to start any of it. Like, it's all just painful for anyone to play any of it. But there's that there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game review. Uh, for those of you who were hoping for, for another Sandbagger game, sorry to disappoint you. I think I've maybe done enough of those for a while on this channel. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll 
do something else for at least a little while. We'll come back to sandbagger games, I'm sure. So stay happy, stay healthy, don't be depressed, and go about your day.